Yo, it's your boy DJ Fall F Rail. And this Cam Ross was flooding. That's so dope. And we are now flooding the streets. Make some fucking noise! Yeah! Shout out to Drink Chance, because we damn sure stole that from y'all. <laughs> but tonight, man, we here with a special guest. You know what I'm saying? Definitely somebody who's been doing her thing for a long time. I feel like she's very into, you know, the community. She helping. You know, I feel like she be involved with a lot of people movements. You know what I'm saying? But tonight, she here. You know what I'm saying? She's promoting everything she doing. We got Aries in the video. In the video. In the building. In, in the fucking video. Make some fucking noise. What's up, Aries? All right, yeah. So, what we going to start, man? You was just trying to say I was here. I understand. Yeah, definitely. Now, I be stuttering on my shit. You know what I'm saying? Because I told you, like I said, no, we the most... Unprofessional, professional podcast. We got the motherfucking lights. That's it, that's we got it. That. You see the blanket? It's a party. Oh, Who turned shit. that one on? We got it. I said oh. lights and lights came on. You know what I mean? <laughs> he is here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I want to start off, man, and ask one thing. What motivates you to do the things that you do? Mm. I've always been like a motivated person. Mm -hmm. I think once I had kids, um, my kids, I call them the cities because um, their names are London and Paris, so okay. that's their like little short name. That's fine. Um, but yeah, so literally, um, they're very talented, so I know I need to have the financial stability somehow to like have it so that they can do what they want to do, so that's why I go so hard. Right. Right. So, now that you go so hard, but what all do you do? Like, it's a lot of viewers. All right, that so, okay, so you need a pen and paper. Because <laughs> one time I was like, oh, I'm going to make my business card. Uh -huh. And I literally had everything I did and nothing repeated. So, okay. um, I'm a mom first. Um, right. Shout out to the babies. Shout out to the babies. Shout out to the babies. <laughs> <laughs> um, I sing, so I sing Anna Wright. Mm -hmm. um, I do graphic design. Um, she do all my flyers. I do Definitely. all of the flyers. <laughs> and and they fire. Shout, shout out to that Flooded Street Fire. Flooded the Street Fire. That shit is fire. We got that. Um, fire. I'm a deep believer in change, so um, most of the time I complain about a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, usually, the stuff I'm complaining about, I'm probably trying to fix or change. So, um, if I'm complaining about it, like, trust is, is working on getting changed. That's a fact. That's a fact. That's all. You just had your first acting debut. Right? Yeah. Mm. Yep. So you want to talk about that? Yeah, so yeah. So I was in a movie earlier this year called Living a Dream. Um, and Is that actually out? Yes, yeah, actually out right now. You can Living hit up dreams. Uncle Trent. Um, Uncle Trent only like two favorite DVDs. Brothers. <laughs> crazy, Every time I hit him up, like, I'm like, yo, I got some change. Let me support something, something local. Whoa. And then he yeah, always pop up. Office. And I'll be like, yeah. yo, what's up? He'll be like, I'll bring them to you yo. two days later. You still coming? <laughs> that's he owes an interview too. Shout out to Uncle Trent. Uncle Trent, he gonna be here. Right? Your mother's that's favorite right. brother. Facts. Yo, crazy right. story about Uncle Trent. Um, was that um, I was at Strong and shit. He was just there. You know what I'm saying? I ain't know he ain't know me. I seen him on Facebook a few times, but like yo, I was sitting there. I had like probably like five dollars or some shit. It wouldn't take my five dollars. So I tried to give him my five dollars. It didn't get me like two dollars and shit just off the strip. <laughs> I was like, y'all go for what this nigga do. I never seen that nigga about scrap because he didn't get me two dollars for no reason. Like I was just sitting there struggling with my little five dollars trying to put in the machine and he gave me two dollars. Man, shout out to my man for giving me that two dollars. Just clap for my man giving that two dollars. Was it like two singles or was it like two dollar bills? Two dollar bills. Yeah, that's what I was just saying. 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 Yeah, that's what I was just Cousin. See, I can never say that. Yeah. Like, no, never, never. Brother, brother, uncle, yo. sister, cousin, brother. But like, Pop, yo, he got this thing. It's mad funny. <laughs> it's about him trying to get to his next show, okay. and like he smokes some weed before he get there, and okay. then it's just, uh, it's just all bad. All bad. But I copy. Yeah, I definitely. play like this drug dealer's girlfriend. I was about to ask, what do you do? Yeah, at first, so like they like know. Character. So here's What's your this, character name. So this is I don't even know. Drug dealer's girlfriend. I don't know. She didn't have a name. 
What happened? We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Don't talk about this movie. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it, the name of the character is just drug dealer girlfriend. Drug dealer girlfriend. Her number one. Because I didn't have no lines originally. So like. You think about it though. Most of the drug dealers I know, like I know they got a girlfriend, but that's she don't her. That's never her name. Have a name. She just never. Or she just over there, or she just come out, hand you something, or and then walk away. Or Keisha. It's right. No name or Keisha. So anyway. Light skin Keisha, dark skin Keisha. No, no complexion. <laughs> no, no, like, stop. All right, all right, all right. right. Direct to the girlfriend game. number one. Boom. No. Keisha. Ah. No. So Keisha's in this movie. Yeah. Um, she's not. <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> Uncle Trent has n- no lines, no uh-huh. lines. That's not what I'm here for because I don't act. I've never been in a movie. Mm-hmm. Like this is just not my thing. He asked right. me to do just stand there, and I was like, cool, I can do that. Uh-huh. So then he was like, no, we gotta give you a line, and I'm like, I would do that, like. Mm-mm, it's gonna come across like so Bishop Carney, aka the high school I graduated from. Okay, you, don't Bishop <laughs> you don't want that. You don't want that. I had a girlfriend over here. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's that. probably. I was just kidding. I was just kidding. I was just kidding. I was just But um, anyway, so I had one line was like "Rock a Bye Baby," and then that was dope. Oh, that's and then I'm in this new movie that he wrote. Wait, so you like shots? Nah, I don't shoot nobody. Like he get punched. That just sound like a line. Nah, I told him to. You know, I told him like calm down. Rock a Bye Baby. And he got punched. Yeah. Like, uh-huh. So you got to go to the movie and like put it together. I'm so. I want my where, where can we get that movie from? Uncle Trent. Uncle Trent. You got to the win. Directly. Uncle Trent. Hey, Shout out to Yolanda Smiles. Like I went to um a show from yesterday. Um, they do brew it like the first thing. Cups of laughs. Yeah. Thank you. I'm so glad you know what I'm saying. Yeah. But um, it was dope. It was really funny. I was really laughing, and Uncle Trent was there. He's selling DVDs. So he See, I, 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 I got stuck because I wanted to go to that one, but then like the person who I was like, I guess I wanted to date, whatever. So, right. I, I had to go to Walmart. <laughs> so, <in the> turkey. <laughs> <laughs> but she got tickets to Jay Reels comedy show. Oh, so I went there, okay. but I thought I was going there because I didn't know Jay Reels was even having one. Oh, well, it was still funny though. Shout out to Jay Reels, you lot of smiles, Uncle Trent, and all the whole cast. Huh? Facebook. 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 Uncle Trent. Yeah, Uncle Trent. That's a fact. So let's talk about this new movie you in. So this new movie is called um, Lost Without You. Okay. Um, and I play one of the lead characters. I play Jocelyn. It's her name, Jocelyn. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Whose production is this? This is still Uncle Trent. And uh, this is like more of a... Yo, he's the writer. Like, he's writing. I need his a role, song. bruh. <laughs> yo, hit <laughs> <head> him up. <laughs> I will ask for a role, but I'm bougie, so... Okay. Actually, I just want to be on a soundtrack. I would like, love to be on a soundtrack. I would love to be on a soundtrack. I would love to be on a soundtrack. I feel like I need to know the movie. <laughs> like, I don't want to just know, sing know, song. So, listen, that's how exactly how my song Dream. He said, hey, you need to write a song about following your dreams. Somebody gave me a beat. I wrote to it. I never had saw the movie. Didn't know I was even going to beat so, it. But at least he told you something. So you want the you know soundtrack? Yeah, I want the soundtrack. That's, that's dope. dope. What, song, what song did you uh, write? The song the I have is called Dream. Um, mm-hmm. It's basically the movie. Like It's kind of like highlight It's like the, the title movie. track. Yeah, mm-hmm. It is, but you see it in the credits, which I thought was mad dope. Because mm-hmm. I just thought it was. Um, <laughs> I like credit music. And I always like we want to know who we sample and stuff. Mm-hmm. But you find it in the credit music. Mm-hmm. Anywho, gotcha. so this song is on the radio. Um, I'm going to like definitely shout out um, Grand Tone's wife, Star. Okay. Star, Star. 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 Like, Star. How this even happened, like, again, all of this was like all by accident. This whole mm-hmm. year was just like, okay, I'm just in these random situations and I just capitalized on it. But this one was like a whole accident. You know, her husband is Grand Tone, he has a radio show. Um, so I guess she told him like, hey, this girl downstairs, she's having this party, listen to this CD. Um, and I didn't think anything of it because, you, you know, if you think like you're small, then that's kind of sometimes how your reality will be. So that's kind of where I was in March. Mm-hmm. Um, so he told me, hey, this song is dope. Message. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, hey, this song is dope. Yeah. Um, we're going to try to get this on the radio. And like, not only did they try, like they did. So it was one of the only songs that made it. And then like everybody else's song got on the radio too. So it was really, really a, a great feeling. And kind of like a reaffirmation. Like, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is what I'm going to be trying to give it up. Like, nah, I got to be an adult. Right. <laughs> like, so, uh, so when you got your song on the radio and you actually like, you know, heard it for the first time, you know, how was that feeling? 
So it's recorded. Like yeah. funny story, my daughter was listening to the radio. Okay. So she's listening to the radio, playing in her room. I'm at my computer as usual, doing my work. Um, and she was like, "Mommy, your song's on the radio." And I'm like, "Man, if you don't get your little stuff out of here, like I gotta put it to the top, 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 top." And then I'm like singing the song. And I'm like, "Oh, that song is dope." You ever seen songs on it? And I was like, "Wait." Oh shoot, that's my song. So like, I grabbed the phone and was like, this is the one time I'm gonna try to capture this moment. And I did, so like after I was done recording, cause I'm a G, I ain't gonna cry on camera. Um, <laughs> yeah, like I yeah. cried. Cause I was like, what? This is such a surreal feeling. Like to hear like something you made, you wrote, and it's just, you hear it. That's gotta be a dope feeling. Thank you. Right. So we can't wait to see the movie when it come out. You know what I'm saying? When do it actually drop? Yeah. So this winter, we don't have like a specific date, but most okay. of the movies are almost shot. Yeah, we're going to be doing a whole All bunch right. of stuff. Right. So um, do we get like press passes like press to like the... the you got to ask him. I'm not the... the oh, so you, writer, but I, I feel, feel like you should. Because yeah, we, we is like the hottest yeah. press yeah. right now. Like we're yeah. popping. Yeah. Like we flood the streets. We got 77 uh, subscribers. Shout out to them. Boom. We came in like one week. You know what I'm saying? We're still pushing for more. I hope you subscribe. You know what I'm saying? Because you know you damn sure part of the family. Like I said, it wouldn't happen if, if you know, my man Huff Maddie. Huff Maddie. Yeah, man. Can't yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. let you know you the boy. Stop playing. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, man, you know, as a, you know, a, um, I'm going to say independent artist, right? With your trials and tribulations, and we know what motivates you, but is there any band, like, some type of... Um, Something that you feel that would have stopped the normal person that would, took place and and just you, you know, being you know, I feel like you were an independent about artist. This. Yeah, I did. I was gonna talk about it. Um, okay. so I wrote this song called "Pushing Me Away." Okay. Um, and I've been performing it a lot. I'm working on a video. Hopefully, it'll be dropping this winter too. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> you know the concept. Yeah. <laughs> I said it too long. <laughs> um. So anyway. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. I just call. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I am actually going through um, a divorce currently. Okay. So I say this with like a big old smile, with so much happiness, like zero bitterness, because I'm truly happy. Um, and I kind of feel like the last ten years of my life, which was basically when I decided I wanted to be serious about music, was mm -hmm. the last ten years. Um, it seemed like forces were like just definitely against me. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was a certain person, their certain vibe. Um, but it took me to like really realize like who you really need to keep around you, no mm -hmm. matter the relationship, no matter the I guess history you have with a person. Like literally, when that person's time is up. You have to prune these certain people, toxic people, people who would like to repeat negative or dramatic cycles. You got to remove them because all of that stuff will rub off on you. Mm -hmm. um, and things won't be open to you or available to you until you remove that person. I, literally, I feel like that. Like Forever, I wanted to take trips. Um, across seas and just yeah. be able to go other places but <clears throat> in my mind I'm like dang I would never have money you know you just have that again small mind frame so right. like I got my passport this year right. it's 225 hey, right? one time for the passport nah. <laughs> how, how much it cost? 140 oh my god 140 and I didn't even do it expedited what? and I got my passport and I have filed divorce like in August and I got that's my cool. passport like two weeks that's fine so, it's time yeah. if you want to go someplace you yeah, can go yeah, it's the time to go I respect that man cause it's like you know dealing with music and stuff like that it's hard to have like people that you been like be around that that loves you, you know what I'm saying, for what you are right. to them at that moment, for you to transpire into something that's more or less at sometimes where they support you, you know, like we all feel mm -hmm. they should support us, which is unconditionally. Mm -hmm. And it's like me, I, I had, you know, a problem with that and I struggle with the toxic people in your life because some of those toxic people you be afraid so let go. You know what I'm saying? So you you deal with it for so long and you know, I commend you for the strength of actually taking that step. But at the same time, um, who is your support system? Um, most definitely my mom, my sister, and my friend Levine. Like they've definitely um kind of just banded together like a you know, like black sisters should do. Mm. But more or less in just different ways. Like my mom definitely is supportive, my sister is supportive. Um 
But for me, um, my biggest fear has never really been um, like giving my all to somebody and like them walking away and I'm like, mm. nah, like it's literally like if you do something crazy to my kids, like that's the thought that drives me insane. That's just, like not making somebody better or giving to them. Like if I make you a better person and you leave and you go with somebody and <clears throat> you guys have an amazing life, then go oh, guess what I just did. Mm -hmm. I just helped two other people have an amazing life. Well, like, it doesn't mean my life's ended. So, <clears throat> you mean about, like, chakras and energies and stuff? No, like I don't. You know? Like, I really it, it don't. Because it sounds like you do. Yeah. It sounds no. like you do. Because, like, it's, it's, a, it's, a whole, it's a whole lot that go with that. Like, like, people with, like, certain chakras, like, they can either mesh with yours or they can't. And then sometimes, like how you were saying, like, holding on to toxic people mm -hmm. and stuff, other stuff. Sometimes certain energies can't be next to each other. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like keeping this person around is like, I kind of went through something similar with a previous business partner. Keeping that type of energy around will just cool. stop a lot of stuff. From happening. A lot of you. like positive energy <laughs> from coming yeah. in. Or it's going to roll in real yeah. slow. <clears throat> so. I and it's still, you know what's there. beautiful though is like when you don't hold like you don't really hold the bitterness. The grudge, yeah, like, like it's a bit. It's a, Cause of the stuff I've been through, people are like, "Yo, you you're smile still a lot a harder." Smile, you look uh, mad, young. I'm like, man, cause like you drink, once, you drink liquor? I don't like I drink occasionally, but you like. Drink Nah. <laughs> no. But you're my mom makes these. I'm asking for all the real niggas do you drink him to see that when you sing right now, that's all. Ma, can we get some handy cupcakes? Yeah, my mom makes these low handy cupcakes. Handy cupcakes. Handy cupcakes. Low Sorak. That's when she said it, I was like, Her name is Lorraine. And when everybody yeah. call her Lola, so they that's call her Low Henny and Low Sorak. So when we gonna taste those um for Yo, um, she said she promotional some, purpose promotion promotional purpose promotional purposes no no for real you yeah. provide her the liquor she'll make them for you oh that's lit we gonna set that up man. Right. get that right I, I, I got said, five hundred I got five hundred bottle <laughs> hey, come on man <laughs> five, I, 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 twenty five and up yeah. oh, <laughs> that is funny um. Also, I think I saw somewhere that you will be graduating soon. Yes, oh, so I'm going back to school. So that's like a big part of this whole 10 year, like being free, because that's kind of how I felt like I wasn't really free. Okay. Um, and I was two classes, so technically seven credits away from graduation when I first got married. And I kind of literally put my life on hold. So like I've been kind of kicking myself in the butt because I'm like, you're right there. Like, you don't have to run. Like, you just got to roll over the line. Can I ask you a question? I'm sorry to cut you off. I don't have my habits. It's a habit I got to work on. But, um, all right, in a relationship, y'all get to the point where it's love, having these two beautiful kids, you get married. Why do you feel the toxic of your relationship put your life on hold? Because I'm dealing with something similar at this point. Because <laughs> no. it's like we're moving, like me, I'm going to just say, sorry, you like put my business out there, but you got a house, you got two cars, you got a beautiful son. And my girlfriend sometimes says she feel like she put her life on hold. But you winning. Like, you're not struggling. Yeah. Everything's that's, there. I mean, you, gotta, you do have to look at that part. Um, maybe emotionally <laughs> she's missing something that maybe you guys could probably... I'll be feeling that. like I need some inches. <laughs> <laughs> That's how she made me feel. Yeah, yeah, no. so, like niggas be having insecurities too. Like I be feeling like you know what? I That's need inches. That's all I need. Oh, oh two. I be okay. The bottom. That's what they want to get touched. The bottom. Or something. That's why I be trying to <laughs> tell <laughs> you. Like niggas just need some inches. And say, like what's the problem? Like everything's good. Like. Oh, well, no. But back to you though. Why do you feel like? Why you feel like it, it was seven credits away? <laughs> You get married, beautiful thing. I'm talking fairy tale wedding. Great, beautiful. No, no, that's not. Listen, that's not what I had. I didn't have a wedding. I never got a ring. Mm. Um, there was a lot of mess and a lot of drama. Okay. And I, to be completely honest with myself, now <clears throat> a lot of stuff like yeah, he was wilding out for doing, but me from my background just. I kind of knew better and I chose like, okay, well, you know, you got to stick it out. The first five years is hard and then you get the five years and then you're not growing. And then you're like, oh shoot, we still struggling <clears throat> and we still doing the same stupid struggle. And then you're like, this is insanity. This is literally insanity. So I'm going to just remove myself 
-hmm. and I'm gonna let you do you and like when I tell you no like I remove myself and this individual is still doing those same toxic things but now to someone else Mm -hmm. It's like, oh shoot, I really did. I mean, I got shot and I was bleeding. Like, I can't say I dodged a bullet because I got shot. Mm -hmm. um, but did I ain't dead. Did you physically get shot? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I thought you got shot. Like, nigga shot you? No, that's my metaphor. I didn't shoot. Like, let's do my shoot you. Yeah, let's do my good. No, but. Say <laughs> good. Shit, bro. Um, but but nah, like, like. You have to, you completely. Like, yes, he's one of my child's father. But, um. Even that's kind of strange because it's like I want so much for her, I want so much for myself, and until you can control yourself with spewing this, I'm not your friend anymore. We, I don't share anything with you except this child, and we just we can't communicate at all. I feel mm -hmm. you, cause like mm -hmm. me and my girl be arguing and stuff, and I feel like when me and her argue, it, it affects how she look at me with my child, and I think I'm a good father. So like I just wanna play devil's advocate sometimes. Like when when let's say for example, it's a family, right? And I look at my dad a certain way. My dad is is um he's not successful, I'm gonna say. And him not being successful, I learned from him. I learned from him many things, how to survive with nothing. Also, I learned how not to be to women and how basically not to be in life. I had, I had um I deal with the same, you know, fears of my father. But at the same time I seen him before I came to age to to deal with him. So it's a blessing. Right. And it's like when when I hear like, you know, you say like, you know, you struggle with dealing with this person in a form of having this person around the child. Like is it do you feel like like it's a guiding factor more say than it is like is it a way where like I'm asking like hypothetically like kind of in the sense I'm not talking true personally um like is it a way to guide a, a person around the problems of a relationship between a human a two men and a female where it doesn't affect the child and that person still sitting there on bullshit is it possible to do that and still care for the child on both parts on both parts it's gonna yeah. take both um, a lot of patience and a lot of maturity. So, I mean, if one party is having this and you truly, like, believe, like, okay, this other person is truly going to come around, because I kind of feel like I was there in a similar situation um, with my first child's father who passed away. So, um, no, thank you. Um, with him, the roles were kind of flip-flop. Like, I wasn't necessarily the best parent. I wasn't the most attentive parent. Um, because I was going through my own BS in a different area. So I wasn't the best parent that I really like could possibly be. And it was very noticeable. And he kind of had to like do the tough love kind of thing with me too. Like, you know, until you get your stuff together, like this is how it has to be. And I'm pretty sure it hurt him because he did know who I really was. Mm -hmm. He did see like a whole different side of a person. Like, I don't know this girl. I don't know this person. But if he wasn't as stern with me, um, I don't think I would have like fought for it as hard as I did when he did pass away. Because once he passed away, it was like, okay, it's just it's you. Just you. It's well, just yeah. you. So if you don't straighten up, if you don't clean up this mess that's around you, if you don't start doing this, you're not gonna have your babies. And like that was like something I'm like, I cannot let that happen. So yeah. for me. Then it was like, okay, now I got to build relationships with grandma now because those are kind of strange before too, but mm -hmm. it was both of us. It took both of us the maturity of uh, So it's not always like a man and a woman. It's just the relationship. It's the relationship of those two people. Right. If you wanted to work for that kid, then you're going to make it work for that kid. Facts. Right. Facts. Mm -hmm. You got to touch. You got a real touch. Right? <laughs> hey, 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 like... Hold on. It's like watching a notebook. It's <laughs> <laughs> definitely it's just, it's just some ignorant shit. So, uh, WDKX or, or, or 105 to B? Um, I like the beat right now. Okay. But so we like we like the beat better. We we support WDKX, but you say you like WDKX, but you also support other artists. How? It's not true. They not do, true. but you just have to have a following. Yeah. Like no, they 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 not they not just gonna pull you in. No, you gotta pay. Who? DKX. Yeah. You got to They're not just gonna pull you in. Like with with them, yeah. it's not just like submit your music and we're gonna play it from a certain time. It's like be, you gotta be cut. What, what was it? A press kit. You yeah. got some DKX press kit. You gotta pay that six hundred. 
That's for like promo. But if you just want your song on there, you gotta send a press kit. Email them like all the time. Like this is why you should be playing my music. This is why I got this many followers. This many people listen to me. I can straight on this site. Or did you got played on WKX? Neither. I got WXI. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that's that's they whole shit though. Like they whole like. Yeah. Do you you listen to you listen to beat more than you listen to? Here's the thing. Because I live in Henrietta. The beat is kind of like weird, and then the other one is weird too. So I just don't. Where did you grow up at? Cause you told me every day you didn't grow up in Rochester. Um, I was born here. I left when I was five. I live in Ohio, Florida, Texas, Ohio, Jersey. Okay. Oh, like, like mm-hmm. auditorium. She's like, where that? Like, yeah. <laughs> 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 but it'd be, no. be some people in the city though that still need directions. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For real though. Like, like, yo, if you can't so find some an people auditorium, like, like, not you because you ain't from If you can't find an auditorium, I just needed to know what you want. Because, like, so because I've been gone for 10 years, the major I started to major in was public relations but they don't offer it anymore so just to graduate and just be done with it i'm just opting for my liberal liberal arts Art. okay. um and then probably going for business business yeah business management business, <laughs> business. <laughs> business. <laughs> yeah, i don't want it for real <laughs> but yeah then i'll probably do business management and i'm um, for you because i kind of feel like that would most likely benefit me in my lifestyle world. Facts. Entrepreneurship. That's what's mm-hmm. What would you say to a younger you about entrepreneurship and starting your own business at this point to everything you went through business-wise to now? What would you say to a younger you? Dang. Be consistent. Because <laughs> I had so many ideas. Um, and I've always been ahead of my time. Like, I remember I was using QR codes before it was a thing. And then... People were like looking at me crazy, like, that. what is this? Like, that. what the F is this? That. And I got so frustrated. And I was like, well, F it. Right. A year <laughs> later. Oh that. my gosh. It was like, like, no lie. Like, I was literally like in the room shelter. Mm-hmm. And like, I was just having a low day. And I look out the window and it was big ass QR on the bus. And I wanted to like throw everything like around <laughs> on the bus. Like, F everybody. Like, ah, oh, nobody believes in me. And then it was there. It's like, nah, you just got to be consistent. Even when nobody believes in you. Like, Facts. I think you put me onto those. We've known each other for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> So what you and Dash history is like? Now that you're single and all, he's a bachelor. <laughs> but I always see you as like a power couple. I remember how we first met. Okay. So, I um, too. I don't know if my story's matched. <laughs> I'll let you tell it. But um, I think I needed a ticket to something, and I worked at a strip club, and I was like. Okay, so at the strip club, was you like the bartender? No, I was dancing at the strip club. Oh, like dancing? Though? Like, like ballet, yeah, not like dancing, dancing, like stripping, like, like aerial arts. So that sounds better. Oh, okay, okay. See, see, like, this <laughs> has like, changed my whole view about you, but it's all right, though. Go ahead. Like, like, nah, I don't, I don't twerk. Um, no, for real, bro, I don't. So <laughs> <laughs> he was like, nah, I'm, I'm coming in there. And I'm thinking to myself, like, what is taking him so long? Like, it's a strip club. Just come in here. Like, right. give me the freaking ticket. And so he was like, yeah, I'm a dancer, too. And I was like, like, like how I dance, he was like, yeah, and then like in my head, I was like, nah, I don't like him no more. That's you a stripper too? I did a couple parties. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> 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 niggas, I thought you niggas was PG-13, yeah. niggas, man, yo. I thought we was the ratchet one, right. man. Well, I'm not saying y'all ratchet for stripper, but, you know. <laughs> Gave it a ticket. Yeah. <laughs> and then, we started, somehow we got on the subject of music, and then I told her I write music. And she was like, oh shit, I do music too. And I'm like, why do we do everything the same? Mm-hmm. So we exchange information, and then we just shows, and just... Y'all I think I wrote a song and you demoed it no, for me. Real. real shit, they'd be like a power couple. You did, like, you demoed a song for me. I did, no, it was when I was really unsure of myself. So I want to apologize to everybody who had me demoing songs before I like knew who I was, because when you don't know who you are, it sounds like you don't know who you are. Mm. <laughs> I don't even have that recording anymore. Actually, he never finished with, like editing it. Who? Thank you so much. Uh, B will, B will. Oh yes. He never. He will. <laughs> don't find that. Like I know you know me. But don't don't even find that. Mm-mm. Leave it where it's at. What's next for you? I know you like trying to get in the Rock Awards nominations right now. Um, like everybody is. Or right, everybody right. Who's, you voted for us for the best podcast in the United States of America. I did not, but I will. 
Alright, cause you know this your home base podcast. I, I know, know it's unofficial, but this is your building. Like this is your shit. You come here anytime you want, any Saturday. You got some shit going on, plug in real quick. Who the fuck who here? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm in here like that for five heart beats. <laughs> 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 one time. Oh. <laughs> five par harmony. <laughs> five. Like, you don't got no questions? <laughs> yeah, when did you start singing? Um, I don't even have like the traditional like I've been singing in church like I really was mad shy like mm-hmm. I, that wasn't what I was about to do at all. Um, because I'm so competitive, um, this kind of started maybe probably like my junior senior year of high school. Um, there was this girl named Katie Sarika. Shout out to Katie Sarika, you the bomb girl. Um, but she always sung the national anthems like. It was she was like the only person in the school that could sing. And I'm like, man, I can sing, but nobody knows. Like, mm, I'm a shooter one day. So then, like, I guess, like, I don't know how it happened. I was like, well, why don't you sing the national anthem next time since you want to sing so bad? That's really what happened. So School of the Arts was playing us at our next game. Shout out to Sutter. Oh, yeah. I thought you were the school. I want to sing. Nah. Shout out to Sutter. No, that's not what happened. So I go to the mic Sutter and I'm like, Arts. singing the song. Just forget the words, so I repeated the part. Somebody was like, "That's not the words." Oh, that yeah. like, but you know, school of the arts got this song inside out yeah. in Spanish and French. They know oh, this song. Shit. So no, that's, that was my first funny. time singing in like the public. I was like, "Ah, it's cool though. Sound good though. I ain't care." <laughs> I was like it sound good though, and I kept singing. So like, I meet an R&B that. singer who didn't start in church. <laughs> like you in church? Who nah. did? Yeah, yeah. Huh? I started in church too. You started in church too? Yeah. If I would have been a singer, I, I would have been starting in church too. Hey, everybody I, asked like, me how you yo, you can you can ask like. Church, I didn't. I, didn't right, I was like I was like the lead oh. of my choir oh. forever. Oh. Like ask anybody who <laughs> just like just well, every single Sunday that the kids had to sing. It was like I don't want to do the solo. <laughs> like <laughs> they're like, but you're the best one. And you the loudest. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. No, you the loudest. Word. Top five R and B artists. You know a lot of R and B artists. You don't know no rappers? No, I don't really. Okay, so I listen to a whole bunch. Okay. <laughs> I know this until like class words. Nah, no? I don't. I don't. Um, it's weird. I'm sorry it's to count. I mean, this is. Uh, I can't. I can't do this question. No. <laughs> Not even R and B. Top five R and B. No. no? Nah. No. Okay. No. Like no particular order. Mm-hmm. I just want to say if I'm on a list. I don't have a list. Well, like, I guess I'm not on a list. No, no, I don't have a list at about. all. Like literally, like it's mad people from this town like that are in my SoundCloud playlist. Like I listen to those regularly. Like you're in my um, SoundCloud playlist. I'm on the list. Okay then. Um, <laughs> Shy to realist. Realist. Yep, he's on my list. Um, Just Dave. If you guys don't know who he is, find him on Facebook. Just. Want to play some Just Dave real quick? I'm not lying. I don't have. Then I'm on live. Oh, okay. Dave, if you're watching, like, Carlita, send me your stuff. Me... Um, but yeah, so, yeah, Dave's a dope producer. Warren is mad dope. Um, like the beats. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. And I know people's governments, too, so. I went to school with him. That makes me really not cool. Because I don't have nicknames <laughs> in my phone. It's one nickname, and the nickname is still an actual name. I don't call it. It's not like booby there and hurts like that. Like niggas be having street names and shit. I'll be like, yo, Clarence, man, chill, bro. <laughs> right. <laughs> Clarence, Clarence had a really nice Like, yo, man, you ain't got no street name. You can't respect my street name. <laughs> I know, bitch. Ain't I you knew you'd be like, bro, no. Like, that's not my street name. That's my acting name. My, no, it's acting. my stage name. Your stage uh, name. Yeah, I'm not a street nigga. I'm a regular Your moniker. Guy. Yeah, it's my. I'm far left rail. I'm, I'm rail from far left. It's a rail. From mad other groups, so I'm far left rail. Niggas be like, "Oh, you rail money?" And I feel nah, like I always say your name wrong because it's, it's far left rail. And, uh, yeah. How you say that wrong? That shit is basic. No. No. How, how I'm you so say? Proud. I want to like just put the words in different places in my brain. Oh, you want to put like rail far left? Yeah. Like, rail left far. Mm-hmm. That's fucked up. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I go. I ain't gonna hold you because I want. It's a, it's a wrestler. His name is Austin Aries. And every time I say Aries, I be wanting to say Austin Aries. <laughs> I was like, and I was like, how you say his name? How you say her name? He's like, Aries? And then you like said it sign. too. Like the sign. That's like a fact. I'm a Taurus. Really? When's yeah. your birthday? April 23rd. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I'm like the most non-talked about sign in the world. 
Like there's no one else. That's a fact. Nobody's in my tourists. Yeah, we got cool people. Yeah, we is, and we slow as a bitch, but we do the same <laughs> shit over and over. So it's, it's just crazy. Yeah, like, that's cool people. That's yeah. it. I'm What's your sign? I'm an Aries. The name is Aries, and you an Aries. I signified the sign. No, that's no. fire. So what's next? What is next? Because we asked like that question. Whole question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, <I> totally <laughs> asked that question. What's next? So what's okay. next? Okay. Yo, you know what's crazy is like I don't really know. Um, I know I started working for um this uh, multifaceted art firm called Coloring on Canvas. So mm-hmm. you went to sixteen, you said right? Mm-hmm. Have I you been too. in there lately? No, they they um. I was gonna ask you about you doing this. It now? Yeah, so it's finished. You should go in there. Is that a school the still? It's still a school. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm a part of a team who did, who are, who will be doing and done the murals in the school. So okay. we have 16. Do you guys know anybody that go to Monroe? No. Well, nah. well you should go to Monroe. <laughs> Monroe is yeah. elementary, right? Nah, nah Monroe High now is down. Yeah, we third. Down down we don't know nobody yeah. going to those schools no more. But let me say this though, right? I went to 16, that was like my favorite school in the whole wide world. Two awesome. school turned me into like a hood nigga, but 16 made me into like an independent thinker. Like, I swear to God, like 16 made me into an independent thinker. And the school's so small, it's, it's only right. I had to write a uh, small school bus home. But that's not because I was dumb, it was only because my school was small. Feel me? I had to know that walk with your ass up the ass. I didn't ride the bus every day. <laughs> no act like I wasn't wavy well, I was at school. Saying, you know, I, was I, was I went to all the East Side schools. Like, yeah, yeah, like talking, number nine. You talking deep in <laughs> I went to number nine. I went to, oh. I went to 22. What? I fought every day at that school. Yeah. Fuck, I don't yeah. even know why. It's like, just life. That's what we do. Yo, yeah. so what, what did you get picked on in school? Because I feel like the kids like these days, they're like mad soft. And I feel like we all got picked on. About I was shit. picking on shit. I had to grow into my ears. Oh, exactly. you, guys Dude, ears. What? you said what? You old big head ass, this dumb shit. Um, What's the question? They don't ask the damn questions around here. Hey, hey, <laughs> that's hey. a fact. That's a first. Yeah, hey, hey, <laughs> fuck. That's a first. <laughs> that's a first. <laughs> Uh, what she say, hi, best friend. No, she said, do you ever get nervous performing? Um, That's dope. Yes, I do. I get extremely nervous um, right before I'm about to go on to the point I do feel like I'm about to puke. Um, but I don't, which is good because we don't need another like eight mile on our hands. Mom spaghetti. Yeah, I'm right. that part. Um, but I do get nervous. And I kind of feel like if I don't get nervous, then I'm a bomb the show. Because like, you just got too much like self-confidence and like... Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's you know that's a fact though. That's, every yeah. time I came on the stage confident, that shit was sad. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, oh, I got this. My ass like, be ass like, knocks me yeah. spin that pain. I'm like, ooh, huh? You all be this shit. I'm known for being the ad lib nigga. I'm fucking up on the ad lib. This shit is crazy. But yeah, so when was the first time you ever got on stage? The first time I ever, well, that was the high school time. I'm talking about as a grown up. Mom. Oh, as a grown up? Yeah, like, um, like actual stage. Like, yeah, like the stage. Like you are on stage as Aries. Yeah. So, I don't know. So, I, I was in this group <clears throat> called Essence um, before I was like doing Aries. Who was in group with you? Um, Natalie Shepard. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Yep. <laughs> um, she was in the group. For all my 77 subscribers, you don't know who Natalie Shepard is. Would you like to explain who that is? As Natalie well? Shepard is one of the um, city. I don't, I don't know her title, but she's important. Is she on the school board? board. Yes. She's on the school board Council, in the city. Uh, okay. It's time to see. And I should know this. Council? No, no, I'm like oh, wrong. Okay. But. Um, <laughs> You go to the C's, Big Low. You see it? Hey, you see it? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. Uh, so she was in it. My friend Tamika Jones and this other girl named Diamond. I forgot Diamond's last name, but she was from um, Baltimore, and she sounded like no lie, like Lauren Hill. Like, mm. oh my gosh, her voice was like amazing. She wow. just would write these amazing songs with for us um, with Natalie, because Natalie is a writer too. Mm. Um, and we was dope. So we were singing a national anthem for now the the men's basketball team at MCC. So that was fun for a while. We were invited to sing the national anthem for like this big trucker event, motorcycle mm-hmm. event at the Blue Cross Arena. So mm-hmm. um, in college, I got to sing at the Blue Cross Arena. Um, and then I was like, oh shoot, not a match the, you know, the national anthem, I can sing it now. <laughs> so it was like, that ain't the worst. Um, and then I just, one day, I don't know, I just never been told no in a way that 
what hurt my feelings, I guess. Like, no means try again to me. So one day I was like, shoot, you know what? I really want to sing for the Razor Sharks game. I don't have a manager. I don't have a producer. I don't have any of those things. But I know I can ask them. I can sing. If they want me to sing, I'm a sing on spot. So I walked into their little office. It was downtown. And I asked them, like, hey, is there anybody singing the national anthem? And they were like, um, well, we kind of got this sign-up thing. Like, why you want to do it? I was like, yeah. So the dude was like, sing something. I was like, okay. And I did. <laughs> and um, then he was like, you know, he was like that. So um, they asked me to come sing it. And then I think they just had a program where they were letting different people from mm-hmm. the um, town sing it. Wasn't you a chili before? Yes, yes. I was also a Razor Shark. So... Again, goals, like personal goals are really important to me. So this was a goal I had set for myself at like 23. And I was like, I'm going to be a racer shark. Hmm. And then I got pregnant. And then I was pregnant for like two more summers after that. And it was just like, that's not going to happen. Let me ask you, to this rule to ask this, how old are you? I'm 32. Oh, you're so young. Yeah, I'm 32. So, um, at like 29, everybody's in school. They're like account of four. And I'm like free so I go to these auditions and they teach us this routine it was mad dope it was mad fly and I was real confident like I've been dancing since forever like I was dancing before I was writing so I'm gonna get this and then I auditioned and did not know the routine I could not remember one step I couldn't remember nothing and I winged it so I walked in there like Whatever, man. I, I, did, I did it. I did it. That's all I cared about is I did it. But I knew I didn't get on this team, though. I was like, I did it, but I did not get on this team. But my godfather had a party that night, and I went mm. to the party. It was, he was turning 40. Shout out to Corey Johnson. Um, and I went, and I got a call right before I walked into this party. Mm. They were like, um... We know you didn't do this choreography good, but we want you on the team. And I was like, what? I got smashed. And I was so wow. drunk that day. <laughs> so when the book is coming out? When is my book coming out? Yes. I don't know. It's don't coming. Know. coming. <laughs> it's coming. That shit is crazy. That's fast. Um, let me see. There's another question. Boom. I've seen you perform before several times. Do you feel that your entire like sneakers compared to heels changes your vibe overall? Or how the crowd responds to you. Oh! Yo, she no. needed she, she, she <laughs> need to come on the show and yes. ask these damn questions. That's a great question. So, oh, she knows. Stay um, home, best friend. Yeah. Funny story is, <laughs> get you? Not, yeah. Yep. Oh, she home. <laughs> she, I told her to come up here. She's supposed to be up here. I could not wear heels um, up until my freshman year of college when my two best friends taught me how to um, walk in heels. They was like a fashion show, and they were like, you should audition. I'm like, nah. Like, um, mm-mm. I've been told how I walk. I told I was walking like a boy, so I don't want to do this. So they made me practice in heels, and then it was like history after that. Now I'm walking. But I still haven't really, like, walked and made it in fashion shows yet. Like, I still don't walk right in fashion shows. But, like, if it's just me in my head, I walk good. I think. I can get where you go. Right. I mean, like, I mean, if you can get there without, like, I used to, yo, girls used to say the strangest things to me, like, oh, you think you all that because you walking like that in your shoes. And I'm like, well, what does that mean? Like, <laughs> yo, because I walk with confidence in my head up. Like, that's, you can do that too, love. Like, stuff like that. Like, I never understood, but I would get that. You walk around like you all that. Like, how do you walk like that? I just. You're walk to. with confidence in my head up. So are you. <laughs> I don't get it. But that was a dope question. Mm-hmm. That was a dope question. Yeah. Shout out to KJ for the dope question. What do you think has been like your biggest success so far, musically, or like just performance based? Um, my biggest success. <laughs> I think getting to this point without an actual song up until like this year. Oh, like, you mean like this interview? Thank you. Like, <laughs> we're winning. <laughs> we are gold, nigga. <laughs> so this moment, like, I don't know. I didn't feel like I was successful in in, in much. Um, and that's just kind of due to my circumstances. I was really, really hard on myself. Um, so when people like tell me to lighten up and stuff, I'm like, eh. Maybe, maybe not, because I just hold myself to a certain standards. And when, like, I feel like, you know, I've made an intentional bad choice, like, I know, you know, some of the stuff is just not going to produce you good stuff. And you're like, nah, I'm going to do it anyway, because I'm impatient, I'm impulsive, whatever. 
Um, but just learning how to control myself, like that's been helpful to why I'm here now. Because mm -hmm. I could have spiraled, I could have went off, I could have mm -hmm. cut people's tires. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, just, you know, strange stuff to have you in trouble or in drama. Like, and I just chose not to do any of those things and like literally just to walk away and like and walk into what it is I want to walk into. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's deep. That's right. <laughs> uh, 2K19 goals. Um, see these flowers right here? Uh huh. That's a workshop. Uh, for that, right? I have or... a workshop. So, um, the firm I work for, they allow us to still be um, our regular artist selves and um, push our entrepreneurship as well. So, I'm doing classes to kind of teach people how to make their own flowers. Now, I have a machine that helps me cut these out. So that's why I can get like a whole bunch done. But I know, you know, people are crafty. People want to do stuff with their kids or just make something for somebody else. Because I think that's an art that's so lost. Everybody is so used to getting money or, you know, just cash at me. Like, man, if you make me something, like. You can cash at me, cash us up. <laughs> For those tickets, <laughs> I didn't know. No, just uh, me. I didn't forget. Uh, <laughs> I didn't forget it all. Um, but when you make something for somebody, mm -hmm. like I don't know, I just feel like they cherish it a little bit more. Yeah, I remember making someone. I had a crush on. I made him like a bracelet, and like years later, he still was wearing it. And I was like, oh man, like that's you, dope. You a jerk. So what those <laughs> flowers? <laughs> what those flowers mean to you? What does flowers mean? What flowers? Oh, flowers. oh, the flowers. These flowers mean a lot to me because um, they were pretty much what I would use to kind of push my energy when I was going through it. And I was going through it really, really hard um, beginning of this year, probably around March. It was like it got really, really, really bad um, to the point where like I didn't want to exist. I didn't want to be here. I didn't want to do anything with anybody. I felt like I just looked so stupid and it's like nothing was working out. I'm like, what am I doing that's just having me in these crazy cycles? Why am I here? So these flowers were what kind of just kept me busy. Mm -hmm. Instead of like, you know, maybe mulling over something that I can't change or <laughs> plotting out stupid things. Um, I did these flowers and then I had a concert and these were the decorations. So everything from my concert earlier this year was handmade, like the decorations, the backdrop, um, the table like settings, t-shirts, everything was like handmade by me and it was the one thing that just kind of kept me busy. Is this at the cafe? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is at the cafe. So cafe. shout out to 18, cafe 1872. 72. Something like that. 1872. If you want to sign up for a class, you can um, go to my Facebook, it's on there, or you can go to my website, that's um, www.teamariesaryes.com, and you can sign up there. Oh. Is there anything you like to say to like our say. followers, your followers? Any questions? Yes, something? I have mad questions. Oh, yes, I do. How? Because I'm, I'm about yeah, to be in the world, like <laughs> single and dating and stuff. How do you date as a musician? You date other musicians. Don't date other musicians. <laughs> he just said no, do it. Don't he say said do say it. Don't no, it. just date people that's in a higher position than you. Because if you don't, if you date somebody less than you, they're gonna piggyback off your success. Mm -hmm. You seem but like the same thing. That's They're more lucky. like that. Don't think like that. So you will still reap the benefits of it. As an artist, as an yeah. artist, my personal perspective. Yeah. As an artist, find somebody who's not an artist but loves what you do as an artist because it's gonna make it a lot easier. It's gonna be like, why you always at the studio? Why you always? Put, I got. I'm trying to make money off this. Like I need to be at these places. Come with me. Like I don't want to come with me. I want to. I want to go with you. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a lot different. That's no, weird I'm for a female. Like, oh, babe, come with me to this. No, like, it's, and that's not, is it weird? Because there's gonna be times I don't want you around me because so I then, need my space. And then if they're supportive enough, they will understand that. If you live with somebody, how how often do you want to give space? Like, is space next door in another room, or is it like one side of the bed? No cuddles. No, um. You said no what? No, I was singing Trey song. Oh, I thought you were singing Trey song. <laughs> no, I was singing Trey song. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. Space to me is like, yeah, I need, like, like cats, dogs, kids gone, like, leave me alone. Like, that's, that's my space. But mm. 
when I like when I'm there, it's literally because I need to regroup. Like, there's things I feel like I need to think about. I need to like shut myself off away from. Um, and I also believe like you, you can be yourself around people that you're comfortable, mm-hmm. but like you're totally you by yourself. And right. like sometimes I need that totally me because sometimes like I'll just go over things that I've done or decisions like, dang you I can understand that. You, you like, need to do something different. Subscribe to that Flood TV. Flood you TV. already know. Flood Check TV. out that Mav Hoffa <laughs> interview. Shout out to Mav Hoffa. That up. man Shotty Riddles is doing his Shotty thing with the freestyle. Check him out. The cypher coming soon. I just got to lock down some things. We got to clean up the pipeline. Pipeline real dirty. Got to holler at my man. <laughs> Matic, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> got to get it right. You know what I'm saying? It's going down. You know, Aries, we definitely appreciate you coming through. You know what I'm saying? We definitely appreciate you. Make some noise for Aries, man. We're yeah. talking about it. I like that camera better. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, you know, definitely, man, you got anything going on, let us know. Tag That's us. Cool. You know, you very professional. You're the most professional person that came on our show. She <laughs> sent me a whole press kit. Press, press, press kit. She sent me like another um thing. I don't look at none of that shit. I'm just letting you know that I'll call me, pull up, and we make this. That's how I do it. That press kit was hard though. Like this shit had the decorations, like I put anything together. And the person that like kind of been pushing me or that was pushing me and like just telling people my name was um Mr. Damian Brown. So if you guys yeah, that's my guy too. need some other flyer and banners, like he's, he's definitely dope so too. freaking dope. Um, and fast. And fast. <laughs> so he's like one of the people like I've always looked up to um, as far as like graphic design goes. He's, he's dope. Yeah, he's dope. Um, shout he out to Teddy Conner. Way Conner's more team. than just that. Teddy, my boy, that's what I fuck with normally. Are we still in the interview? Yeah, we're still here. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we just still, we just shooting the shit now, I guess. Yeah. Here we go! Ha, 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 ha.